10 has dismissed concerns that Boris Johnson has lost his grip after claims that several Tory MPs have submitted letters of no confidence. Speculation over the Prime Minister's future comes after his rambling speech and weeks of controversial moves. Joining us now is Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab. Uh, Dominic Raab, thanks for joining us. Let's start with Boris Johnson, actually, shall we? Um, I mean, it's not been a great week. It never seems to be a great week. It's one thing after the other. We are hearing journalists asking the question, are you OK? We're hearing the inside Downing Street, there are now issues. Uh, it's a real cause for concern that the man of our leadership, the, the man who's leading our country, appears to be losing the plot. Well, look, there's always this Westminster commentary, and that's fine, happy to answer those questions. Frankly, what he's focused on, what I'm focused on, what the government is focused on is... Um, coming out of this pandemic, uh, the booster um, vaccine rollout uh, phase through the cold winter months, which is going great guns. We keep wanting to push on that. Um, the economic support we're providing for businesses and uh, uh, workers across the country. We announced £96 billion of investment in rail infrastructure in the Midlands and the North. Uh, I'm talking today and happy to take questions later on criminal justice reform, particularly um, for the unlawful killing of emergency workers. Uh, we're getting on with the job. Um, we, of course, we wouldn't have jobs up, wages up, um, uh, uh, economic growth up if we had listened to the advice of the Labour Party and stayed in lockdown. So, frankly, I think for most uh, uh, listeners viewers, my constituents, what they really care about is how we're delivering and the government is delivering in all of these areas. Okay. Well, uh, the trouble is, you might say that about viewers. Uh, viewers are also really concerned about sleaze. We know um, also backbench Tory MPs have been really concerned about the way that they were um, whipped, um, uh, told to vote uh, over sleaze reform. There are concerns about social care. There's been... Um, you know, some rebellion on the back benches about that. We know that there's concerns about the Northern Powerhouse. And while all of these concerns are there, and as you say, continuing issues over the pandemic and concerns over restrictions coming up to Christmas, we have the Prime Minister losing his way, literally losing his way in a speech to the most powerful business leaders in the country at the CBI and talking about Peppa Pig. It just doesn't look like serious leadership. Well, I don't accept that. Let me put the case back to you. In terms of economic reform, as I said, because of the measures that the Prime Minister has taken with the Chancellor, uh, jobs are up. We've got the fastest, joint fastest economic growth in the G7. Wages are up too. He pointed to Peppa Pig because it is a great uh, British export around the world, not just... And I think a lot of uh, viewers may be surprised to know, I mean, many have watched it with their children or their grandchildren, um, uh, as I used to do when mine were a bit younger. But actually, it's a massive export right around the world, including in places like China. Uh, when it comes to social care, which you mentioned, look, we are the first government in a generation to grapple with a positive proposal to deal uh, with social care. We've capped the cost at £86,000 uh, which means it's far more affordable and there's far less risk for those that get the lightning strike, the lottery ticket, uh, the Russian roulette, if you like, of dementia. Uh, uh, and it's a far more positive and work through plan than Labour. Labour's suggestion okay. in their last manifesto was uh, a cap of £100,000. Uh, and then there's the, the, the wider issues around criminal justice reform, yeah, but, the investment okay, in infrastructure. Talk, so, OK, we're going to talk about social care. The cap of £86,000 of course, disproportionately affects those on lower incomes because you announced this amendment this week, of course, that any contribution that the state makes to that £86,000 won't count. So you've got, uh, unfortunately, um, that's backfired, hasn't it? I don't accept that because, of course, in terms of the, the means testing, anyone with assets below £20,000, so the, the, the least well-off, uh, will pay nothing towards their costs. Um, so we've set out a proposal which is costed, responsible. It deals with the problem at hand, uh, particularly uh, for those that, that, that uh, may suffer dementia and indeed their families, and they're worried about um, uh, the, the consequences and the overwhelming burden of those costs. No one else, and, and it's quite right to have the scrutiny, and we should have it That's in the a Commons, very by the way. Low threshold, by the way. We, by the way, we won all the votes in that in the House of Commons. Um, but no one has come up with a credible alternative. I'm so, and that's fine. I, I think it's absolutely fine for the 
media to criticise, uh, to scrutinise, and indeed our backbenchers, but there is no credible alternative out there. And you talk about seriousness in politics. Frankly, we're the ones, and this Prime Minister is the one, that has a credible, responsible, affordable plan for social care, and we're just hearing... Uh, 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 well, if you like, so, carping well, from the well, sidelines. Well, Mr. Saab, Mr. Raab, a lot of people say a credible alternative was to look after poor people. The, the pure, pure fact, for those people in the north whose assets, if you've got a house, may barely be £86,000 or £100,000, they stand to lose it all. And therefore, what their children will not inherit. It's all right for the likes of yourself and probably some, many of us who may, maybe do have some, some wealth that we can pass on or we can inherit. But this affects poor people. So if you want to ask us for a credible alternative, a credible alternative to look after of the poorest people in the country. Sorry, first of all, it's factually wrong what you said because of the fact that anyone with um, assets uh, under twenty thousand, twenty thousand pounds or lower, will, will uh, not pay anything towards their costs. Okay, but, so, but, but that, that sorry, is not. Let me, let me answer. Yeah, because, but, yeah, but and, you're, and you're talking about. The, but I'm, I'm talking about those who, who fall under the hundred thousand, eighty-six thousand threshold. That twenty thousand is a very low threshold. But what about the others? Now, that's a lot of people in this country. There's a lot of people in the north of this country. So anyone with uh, assets between uh, 20,000 and 100,000 will have tapered support. And crucially, and this has never happened before, there is, as a result of setting the cap where we've set it, at £86,000 on cost, there'll be insurance products like mortgage uh, protection, which will make sure uh, that no one has to find themselves with uh, overwhelming uh, or disproportionate costs. And it is, and, I'm, and I, let me just push back a little bit, it is impossible to say, it is wrong to say, um, that this is somehow is applied in a differential way. The £86,000 uh, cap on costs, the distinction, uh, the, the £20,000 to £100,000 uh, assets tapering of support you get applies to everyone across the country. And, and in fairness, it's not fair to say, well, actually, an incredible alternative is to look after the poor in such a nebulous way. What is That's the not plan? Fair to say. Why is that not fair to say? That is the fairest thing we should be saying. Surely, you, we all should be thinking That's the most credible cred alternative policy in everything you ever do should be to look after the poorest people. How is that not the fairest thing to say? Uh, well, if you just take a little bit of pause for breath and let me uh, answer the question in full, the, the, of course it's right to criticise, and that's your job and, and to scrutinise, but I don't think it's right to say, well, uh, it is too stingy or it's not supportive in one or other way for one or other section of the of society without coming up with a work-through credible alternative. I don't agree with your characterisation. I think this is progressive. I think it is responsible. I think in all the ways I described, the cap on costs, the support that we give, particularly for the very poorest, which was... Uh, your point is all of all there. The protection so people don't uh, lose their home is all there. And no one else has come up with a credible okay. alternative. The Conservative Party manifesto in 2019 says social care reforms must guarantee that no one needing care has to sell their home to pay for it. Sajid Javid said earlier this year, no one will have to sell their house in their lifetime. And then the business minister, Paul Scully, on Monday has watered down the pledge even further, there will be fewer people selling their houses and hopefully none. That's not sticking to the manifesto promise on social care, is it? And when you say, you know, it's, it's passed, the bill was passed, or the amendment was passed, 19 Conservative MPs voted against the plans to water down the social care cap. You didn't even have unanimous support on your own back benches. I don't think any government uh, other than one in North Korea could, um, in a democracy, expect to have 100% support uh, for everything that they do. Uh, in relation to um, uh, the approach, we've, it's very clear no one would have to, uh, no one that's suffering from dementia or no one that needs the care would have to sell their home whilst they're living it, nor would that apply to a partner. And in all the ways I've described, uh, this proposal is far fairer uh, and far more sustainable and does, gives far more protection than anything that has been proposed before. It is fairer uh, and uh, provides greater protection than what Labour proposed in their last manifesto. Their cap of cost was £100,000. It provides more protection than the original deal not proposals, much debated, much scrutinised. So again, we come back to this point. It's an expensive policy. We've had to put a huge amount of time and effort in. We've got to strike the right balance between those providing and, and supporting themselves when they're able to, um, subject to all the considerations okay. we've gone through. Um, but no one has come up, not now and not previously, with a credible, affordable, responsible plan the way that we 
we've done. Uh, and I think this is the right thing to do. And I'm proud that this Prime Minister and this government is grappling with the social care uh, challenge, which has been ducked by uh, okay. uh, previous governments. Uh, we absolutely got to deal with it. And of course, that's going to be contentious. That, uh, difficult reforms always are, but we've got a plan, we're going to deliver. I don't hear anyone else coming up with a credible alternative. Um, just before we let you go, Dominic Raab, it is important to talk about Harper's Law. And uh, this is a great credit to Andrew Harper's widow, Lissy Harper. Um, can you just let us know what it will change and, and why you're prioritising those lives of the emergency service workers that, it, that you're hoping to protect? It means that anyone that is convicted of manslaughter, unlawfully killing um, an emergency worker in the course of their duty, and whilst, in terms of the perpetrator, committing uh, a criminal offence, will get a mandatory life sentence. Um, I think the case of PC Andrew Harper was incredibly compelling. I pay huge tribute to Lissy for the campaign, the work she's done, and the Police Federation. We want those uh, who put themselves on the line for us, the emergency workers, uh, who put themselves on the line and are at increased exposure uh, as a result of that every day of the week, we want them to know that we've got their back. Um, and, of course, it's worth just saying that there were 10,000 convictions for assault on emergency workers um, in the last year. So this is about Lizzie Harper and Andrew Harper, but it also is about a broader uh, practice, challenge, systemic problem, and we're dealing with it. OK. Dominic Raab, thank you for your time this morning. Deputy Prime Minister and Justice Secretary.